Let me introduce you to the beginnings of the Lion Man. Discovered as tiny fragments of mammoth ivory on the 25th of August in 1939 in a cave in Germany, the Lion Man is a figure sculpted by prehistoric human hands at the time of the last ice age. It was not until 1969 that the fragments were finally pieced together and more were found. In total, around 200 fragments make up this fantastic figure. Radiocarbon dating has allowed researchers to discover that the Lion Man may be up to 40,000 years old. Therefore, it has been concluded that it is the oldest known evidence we have of a human being giving physical visual form to something they could never have seen, to what is product of the imagination. From researchers' experiments using similar tools, an estimate of 400 hours was made for the time taken to carve the Lion Man. These people were living on the edge of subsistence, with food, fire and shelter their priority, yet it seems the Lion Man was of considerable priority also. Moreover, the fusion of the sculptor's most dangerous and feared predator, the cave lion, and the largest creature that roamed their land, the mammoth, with their own humankind, is fascinating, whilst mysterious. The idea that a community 40,000 years ago was, like so many today, considering their place in the world, is remarkable and humbling. The handling of the lion man is highly symbolic. The idea that through sharing something with meaning, we can smooth its edges, refine and define, we can learn, we can reveal beauty, and we can shape ourselves too. This is something not only about the object and the value it can bring, but the value of community. Around the fire we imagine this Ice Age community would have gathered, passing the Lion Man around, maybe in awe, as if it would have been a great privilege to hold such a thing. But maybe the frequent handling tells us that to be able to grasp the Lion Man was not exclusive, it wasn't for the privileged few, but for all who wanted to share in something, all who believed, and all who wanted to belong. Living such a precarious existence, these people couldn't have afforded to be intolerant of others. They relied on those around them for their own lives. It would have encouraged participation, ownership, responsibility, and all these things give our lives meaning. In the end, is that not what we're all searching for? Something more, something other, something beyond, something not restricted to the here and now. Something that can transcend time and space, that lasts and endures, a constant. Here the Lion Man does stand, proud, tall and strong, upright, alert, composed and thinking, listening, watching, quietly grinning. An entreat stance, tales of insight through your carvings, humble authority, distinguished presence. A furrowed ear, a mindful gaze, holding the lives and stories of a community devoted and determined. I wonder what those eyes have gazed upon, who you've seen and what you've heard. I wonder who has held you, handled your intricate form. I do know that you meant quite something to those people, who, like me, search for meaning. A meaning far beyond the ability of eyes and ears, far into our imagination and beyond the realms of dreams. A meaning that makes our place in the world feel a little less small, a little less lonely, because I want to stand as one with my world and my people, sharing the tangible, and the abstract, what we can hold in our hands and in our hearts, so we can belong as we believe. Belief is the foundation of religion. The story of the Lion Man reveals so much about the constructive powers of belief, how it can unify and connect, but we can't ignore its destructive powers also, with the potential to divide and devastate communities. Over 4,000 religions exist in the world today, and 85% of people are considered to be believers. So much in our world is divided by disagreements over belief. What can give meaning to lives and even define them can also cause people to deny the meaning of the lives of others simply because a belief is not shared. Neil McGregor commented that, you could say it's when a group of people agree on the way fragments of the cosmic puzzle fit together that you truly have a community. The power to believe whatever you want to believe is a gift, but I guess it's a gift that takes responsibility and gives you power too. Belief gives us capability and choice and I'd like to think that in our fragmented world, we would strive to restore above all else. As a Christian, I believe in a God who is the ultimate restorer, who gave the greatest gift, and thus enabled us today to live with the ability to make our own choices. Free will gives us important responsibility, to shape our world for everyone, not just for some. To coordinate harmony is to be as others are, and to know in your heart that you can believe, and as you believe, you can truly belong.